I'm about to get this thing going all together. We yeah. been shooting this for what, damn near a year and a half? The pandemic yeah. had to slow the plans And then we had a zoom in this thing. This started off straight zooming. And we, we got all the way where we wanted to get to. Yes, sir. That's crazy. Kick it off, Billy. Hey, well, welcome in, guys. We appreciate you guys being with us. You're here tuning in to The Perspective. We have the, 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 the guys here, and uh, we're going to continue to talk about those controversial topics and things from a black man's perspective that you guys like to hear, man. So, you know, what's been going on, man? It's been a couple of weeks since we didn't, 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 didn't shop, we didn't chop it up. What's been going on in everybody's lives? There's a lot that happened. <laughs> Our lives, you mean in the world, bro. <laughs> what's what's been happening, bro? Which, which one you want to get? I mean, you got, you got NFL teams finally accepting some black people. Right. Mm -hmm. You know how you look at that? Right. You got people getting slapped around the world. Okay. <laughs> Slap her around the world. Child support. Child, Child support. support. And then we also got this thing on my boy, yo. Y'all know how I felt last time we shot the episode about about my boy Kanye, man, and AB, and if they, you know, crazy or not, and things like that. I really want to get into that. There's a lot of stuff being said around there, too. So, we can get them. It's all types of shit. Well, what you on. think, when you think about the Kanye situation, for me, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, you crazy, you crazy, you crazy. But for me, you know, he's advocating for his kids. And I think one of the biggest issues is that this in this world, when black men go out there and advocate for their children, mind you, the way in which he's doing it, people may feel, you know, a certain type of way about it, but this is his family he's fighting for. He's fighting to continue to be in the life of his kids and also stay married. So when people are talking about the way in which he's going about it, man, how do you dictate how somebody fights for their family? He's not putting his hands on anybody. You can call it harassment if you want, but you can call anything harassment. You sure could. I think the issue is that we want people to do things in the box in which we would want them to do it instead of realizing, like, if this man is fighting for his family, black men or men in general already get a bad rep in the family court system. Right? There's there's an automatic assumption that kids are going to be placed in the custody. Fight from an enemy. Right, from an enemy. Yeah, fight from an enemy. Right. Right. Even ground, right? So then you go into that perspective. They both have money, so they both obviously have good legal teams and all that. So what is he supposed to do but advocate for his family? Yeah, I think the thing with the Kanye thing is really, it comes off as, as we always feel like Kanye has some type of an up problem. Which he probably does. We call him narcissist on our last show, right? But the thing about it is, it's like, okay, he's having an episode right now. He's, he's throwing 50 tweets out a day about Pete Davidson or Kim or whoever and his kids or his daughter being on um, TikTok or social media, whatever it is, or have wearing makeup. But that's his right as a father. He don't want her on TikTok, he don't want her wearing makeup, etc. So I think when he's doing like 50 tweets of whatever, people feel like it's too much, like it's over the top instead of it being protective or whatever. So, see, I think it's the, the content that he's putting out that's the issue. Like, Yes, he's fighting for his family, he's fighting for his kids, but he's putting in so many other aspects that it's taken away from, I'm really trying to make sure my family's aligned, that I got those connections, that I keep those connections. And yeah, I want to get Kim back at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. He probably doesn't want her back. True. But, you know, that's what happens when you're removed from who you were with. But I think what's getting him thrown off is all the Pete Davis, I'm going to get at you. Or Pete Davis, da, da, da. if you remove Pete Davis from it, you really focus on your kids. People are going to be like, hey. We're having real conversations about it, but Kanye being Kanye puts it all in one big pot, and that's why people get to pull it apart. But that's where conversation is real. It is real content. Like, let's keep it real, right? When people go through breakups, most of the time it's not mature. You're going to have someone that's like, especially when one person moves too fast and this new partner that everybody's not willing to accept, you're going to have one partner being like, for like, I'm trying to fuck with you. Like, I'm not cool with that, or sending little subliminal shots at the partner and things like that, right? I say where it actually becomes authentic to what people really deal with outside of what we think people are supposed to do is Kanye is doing what most, well not most people, but a lot of people do. They actually have a problem with their partners moving on with another spouse, and they actually have problems with their spouse making decisions for their children that they both didn't agree on. So when it comes down to him having an issue with the makeup shit for me, I mean, if I don't want my young daughter in makeup, I'm going to be getting at the other parent about that. The only thing that he's doing is giving us a glimpse inside of, of the window. He's saying, look, the same things that y'all argue about behind closed doors between a baby mama, baby daddy type of dynamic, or the husband, spouse, whatever, or just parents involved in the situation, he's putting it right in the forefront. But I don't feel that anything that he showed us is unique to what normal people go through in breakups. Not all, but... For every one of us, we know somebody that goes through a breakup 
like Kim and Kanye. Sure, yeah, but it's not it's not helping this situation. No, but but that's that's the thing about who's to say it doesn't help the situation though because, because they're not knowing how they're breaking up. Does that mean like oh let me support Kanye more? You're no, like oh no. I'm seeing both. Wait, do people I'm, have drama breakups that you actually that actually work through it? Where their breakups are hella dramatic, but they do work through. It. I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you a question. It's it's the transition to learn how to cook here. They True. have a transition to learn how to cook here, so they don't really know how to deal with like oh let me go ask him about this. Let me go ask her about this. Right. They're still trying to figure that out. I don't know if Kim is really trying to ice him out because when she sends her little tweets back, like you just had the kids the other day, or you just had that, like she's making it seem like he's doing more than or being more grandiose about it, but or whatever term you want to use. But I feel like they they're in the process of trying to figure out like what days I got to work, I to go to, or do I got to do something. Right, so like, how do you okay. And Kim ain't no cool parent herself. This is all new to her. Sure. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So it's all new. So they these they, they first set the kids with anybody. So they still trying to figure that out. I think anytime you have things play out like this in public, there's always going to be a mixed opinion on how things should be done because we're looking at it from outside, right? We're looking at it from an outside perspective, trying to insert our views, our values, our reactions onto the situation. I think where the problem lies is that how society tells people how they should and shouldn't advocate for their sure. families, right? I think the, the reality is you get a lot of backlash in the media about, oh, he's engaging in these pseudo-domestic violence behaviors and, oh, intimidation and things of that nature. For me, I look at it like, I, I told my wife a long time ago, if something happened between us, I'm going to live next door. So I can be as involved in my kids' life as possible. It's not to intimidate you and keep you from living your life. I'm going to live as close as possible because what pe people don't understand is as your kids get a certain age, regardless of your custody of your parents, their kids are in their home neighborhoods. They're going to want to be around their friends. So if dad lives on the other side of town, and automatically phases right. one parent. Yeah, right. dad gets phased out because he's not, he doesn't have access. Pete, you've been in this house. I'll, 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 I'll tell you. Uh -huh. <laughs> From the court system, the closer you live, the better it works out for you. Yeah. Because they really will. I mean, this is California, so I'm going to No, we're that. talking about, yeah. yeah. But that's, that's, the the most, most, yeah. that's the most strictest. Yeah, yeah, that, So I'm going to say, California. Calculator, and by calculator, I mean how much you're gonna pay in child support. Bring that down here for people that ain't been here. The calculator is gonna tell you how much you're paying for child support, and then look at that vegetation, how much time you spend with your child. Now, if the calculator or the, the person in the middle says, oh, you live 20 miles, and that means you can't really get them to school on time, oh, you don't get them to the daycare, oh, you can't get them to the practice, you're gonna do weekends, which means there's five days out of the week, you're not gonna see your kid, this is how much you're gonna pay for not seeing your kid during that week. If you live closer, now we can break up you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, switch, swap, whatever. Now we can lessen your amount through the calculator. So the closer you live, the better it works out because now the court says you're engaging more. Yes. Ooh. You're so, doing more. So I'm not getting messy, but break it down. At, at a time, your child lived in LA and then oh. you, had, you got to see it from when they moved closer. Right. We ain't gonna get into the parameters around the money and they can switch the money up, but how did you feel that affected both? Like just from, if you look at the Kanye and Kim situation and look at them, I can't live hell far away from me in LA. I live in SAC and then when he moved closer, how did that affect it? And how could you see the relation between what they going through? And I'm moving next to our house. Right? So from my perspective, mm -hmm. I took ownership of that. All right, you moved to LA. That's what you wanted to do. That's your decision, but he's still my kid. So. Sorry to say, I flew down there more, or I flew him up to me every, what, two or three weeks. There was a weekend visit flying up, and then when school was out, now nah, he's going to need whole, that whole break. Mm -hmm. Or I'm down there working remotely for a little bit, or taking days off, just so that we're engaged. Now, the calculator don't care about that, but that's what I did, because that's my son. That's what I wanted to do. Right. So, Kanye, and this is my personal perspective, you got way more funds than I do. So, however you want to work that out, you can really make that happen. You live next door. You know, so he's, so he's next door. I don't know where he lives. I'll be like, I'll go to the room. Walk the house next door. But so then here you go. So, I mean, he made a smart move then. He shouldn't have did it that way. Now, how he engages, that's a double level. But here's the thing about how he engages. Let's actually yeah, talk let's about get to that because I got hella because so, about so, that. So, so the reality <laughs> is, he's an entertainer, he's an artist. Mm -hmm. And if if he wants to express himself in a way where she's saying he wanna do whatever, whatever Pete, Pete Davidson, but hasn't engaged in those behaviors, all that is is him expressing his feelings. He may be mad at Pete Davidson. He may right. want to be Pete Davidson's ass. But he ain't engaged no violence. He know how to find Pete Davidson. They all live in LA, they all live in the same place. Right? They live next door to a certain degree, right? Right, he does be in some of them ways. He know that car out front. People are quick to jump on the internet and say, well, 
you know, he's this, he's once again, he's an entertainer. Right. Right? He's an entertainer. When he made a music video, when he did this very descriptive thing of, uh, of harming someone. Descriptive or artistic? How many, how many movies have you watched that gave you Break down by break down on how to commit a crime, how to do something about it. And nobody ever says, well, that movie was this and this and that. I think what, what happens is black men are constantly, regardless of what they do in these situations, they're demonized for the behaviors. We may not all agree with the 50, 60 tweets, but that's how he decided to engage with the world. Right. Well, not only that, too. Now, how many calls for service have we heard about to Kim yeah. Kardashian's house? Zero. Right. So the whole fact is this. Everybody wants to say his behavior is over the top. There's no cause for service by the police there, right? This lady pretty much puts a lot of her life and chronicles her life all throughout TV. Do we think that if he was doing something that was restraining order or worthy, our police yeah, yeah, calls, yeah, they yeah, would have, yeah. not only they got him, she would have, we would have been heard about those calls coming out. True. And the whole thing is this. Yeah, he's descriptive about all these things, but at the same time, most of us would say that there are women out there that if you cheat on them or get a new girl, they're going to have something to say to some similar kind of thing. No, I mean, there are men out there that react the same way. So the, the, the other piece, though, that I think is not that we, we got to remember is there's kids involved. So those 50, 60 tweets ain't never going to go away. True. The way that they're mom and dad are acting is never going to go away. Nor is the Ray J sex tape. No, it's the Ray J sex tape. And that's why we're all here. Wait, listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, that, may, that may be true, but at the same time, my perspective, if your dad... Respect. Perspective. If your dad, your dad, Ray J wasn't my dad. Mm -hmm. Ray J wasn't when he was young. But your, my dad, this is what my dad was doing. And so that becomes a different type of conversation. But I mean, I think, I think to be honest, like we talked about, he ain't nothing too egregious. He's an entertainer, he dropped the album, he dropped a stem player, he did all that, like leading up to that. Not mm -hmm. to say that he's using his family situation for that, but all that is entertainment too. So he he know how to capitalize. He's doing it for a reason. Right. He know how to play the right. game. He definitely does. He know how to play the game. So the stuff with Pete is probably just entertaining in my perspective. I ain't never know the dude. He ain't never done nothing violent to nobody that we ever seen. Even like when we watched this documentary and he wrote up on the news, he just had a conversation. He did more hurt than Trump be violent, right? So we know that ain't in his the game like that. Like that. But even the opinion, okay, like some, okay the, the tapes are never going to go away. I get that. What my dad is doing is never going to go away. But we're all fathers of sons, right? And we also have had different types of dynamics with our own fathers. Do you teach your child from a point of, don't do this because I did it and this was the outcome? Or do you teach your child from a point of, don't do that because I said don't do it? Like some kids actually, and for some of us, there are situations that I couldn't relate to with my own father because he hadn't been through them. Had, but give me somebody who actually had to live through that type of situation, then I find more validity in what they say. So the fact that their children are going to be famous by default, the situations that they go through and how they act and how their parents act, and yeah, it may cause the behavior, but it also may cause a deterrent or prevent the behavior because they can say, I did watch my parents go through that and I don't, I know I don't want the same outcome. So there is some pluses towards the behaviors, even though they're highly conscious. Right, you know, I mean, but they don't know. You still, like I said, boys, but boys gonna butt the head. They gonna, my son is trying to jump out of his crib right now. But until he <laughs> jump out there and bust his head, he's gonna know, I can't do that again. Yeah, right. 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 So he's gonna try, he gonna try some stuff, right? And right. all y'all sons and y'all kids are older than So they gonna try some stuff, you be like, bro, what are you thinking? But they gotta learn, they gotta learn. Right. But like you said, some stuff that you see through your parents or your loved ones, like, I can't repeat that. Like, you know, we we are educated brothers. We know we're not going to the streets to sell no drugs like the generation before us because we've seen what happened to them, right? Yeah. So, you know, you, you do pick up on things and say, like, I can't, I'm not going to move like that. I can't rock like that. But don't we want to see, I think what it all boils down to is, I think when you look at the family court system, there's always a struggle of a father's involvement and them restricting father's involvement. Right, so oh, right. That's a that's a that's a good that's 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 use that paper. Yeah. They ever use that paper to say, well, no, this is the, this is the only involvement you're allowed to have in your sure. children's life. Right. You know, and, and we can go to court, but hey, when they gonna be this court date? Four or five months from now? Sure. So until that time, until that time, what you do? Right? I think that might be the thing when we talking about. That's why I was talking about the sixty tweets. Is he might be putting like they're putting the case together. Against him, she got just as much money as him. Right, right. So it's like the things that he's saying and doing, like, is that money gonna harm him in the court system? I don't know. Right, and a good lawyer could say, or his, did he have multiple tweets? He did. Dude, does Kanye flood my Instagram timeline with this kind of Sometimes, absolutely. But, 
But if he's not hurting anybody, that's your interpretation. How she reads those tweets and how she can say, I'm traumatized by right. those tweets. Yeah. So let me ask you, but if you're traumatized by him, then why would you pull up and go to a soccer game? Because he's the father of my kids and that's what I But have that's to just do. it. From from my now from my professional standpoint, that's just it. People will put themselves in situations that they deem not to be good for them, that they could actually have control over preventing, but they'll show up to them anyways and be like, but that's the father of my kids, things like that. Well, now you're making it a sentimental value. So if you're willing to talk, teeter talk on your emotions and what sentimental value is, then how dangerous is this person? Because if someone's truly dangerous to me, I stay away from them. Yeah, but that's your rational thinking. That's, that's rational in general. Well, that's 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 but how is that just my rational Because that, this is what I'm saying. I'm telling you from experience. When she says, well, I be around him because we both gotta be around my kids, but when he does this, I feel threatened. Well, he didn't do it towards you, no, know, but he did it around me. And so I felt some type of way. So why did you but do that? Like, so but then the question goes, why'd you do it? And you're like, shoot, I was just walking. But then you're talking about logic, and I do I mean, right. logic versus emotion. I think emotion, we, we know that some people who react traditionally through emotion. Their, their emotions are fluid. In one moment they feel one way and behave one way based on that emotion, and then the next moment they feel a different type of way and you get a whole different behavior. Right. I think the realities are, anybody can play the victim role. Anybody can say, Absolutely. hey, you are more me or you're a trigger me. Hey, you walk by and I'm triggered because of the way you walk by me. Yeah. You're right, so I think that's that's tricky. I think with, in, 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 from a legal standpoint though, if we're talking about what needs to be done in communities to maximize fathers' involvement, then we have to directly look at the court system, and then we have to look at society and how society says, well, hold on, he could be harming her. Okay, he could be harming her, but he also could be advocating for his family. Right. What I'm saying is it's subjective on what we can yes. deem harm or not, and right. that's always tricky, right? It's always tricky when there is no black and white compared to what's being harm. It's always in that gray area. Sure. And anybody can use that at any moment when they want to manipulate the situation. Right, right. and why are we talking about harm when it comes to this situation? He he never, he's never, she's never once said that he's made any threats verbally or physically to harm her. We've never heard that to be the dynamic sure. in that relationship. But now we let society, and I'm not gonna say we, they actually play a part in that too by letting us all into their, their bedroom, basically. And now we're saying that this dude could potentially harm her. I don't find his behavior to be someone that I'm going to It's her. They're talking about Pete, bro. Okay, but if Pete gets his ass, well, I mean, he's just a casualty of war. Like, there are a lot of people that kill like that. Bro, custody battles are war. Yeah, but, but he rich, though. I mean, I, I, I'm just keeping it real. If I got to bring a lawyer into the room, that is a measurement of how I go to war. And the lawyer that I can afford is a measurement of how much I am willing to pay to win the war. They are my front linemen, they are my sniper, they are my airmen, they are everything. That is what you bring them in for. Because, I mean, two people should be able to negotiate something. Sure. If we in court, I brought in my, my war piece. But, but not in this. I think it's she. Two people should be able to negotiate. Not in that realm. What does it say? Once you bring a court in, there's no, that's the Everybody's thinking right? logically at that point because they acting up emotionally. Right. Yeah, well, you know, it should be today. But it gets back to something we talked about, you know, several perspectives ago. Men, fathers prepare, mothers protect. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, if, when you're thinking about how men and women interact with their children, you have a situation where you can't be logical about the situation because both people think that they're doing what's best for the kid, but they're doing what's best for the kid in two different ways. Right. And that's where the conflict always happens. Kanye is saying, I don't want my daughter to have a TikTok. Because I don't want my daughter to be exposed to that, right? And, and Kim was like, oh, no, I think it's fine, I think it's okay. Because she because I want to do So then, as, like, as co-parents, like. you want to do one thing, I want to do the complete opposite. Where's the compromise in there? Is it we don't do it because I don't want to do it, or we do it because you want to do it? You, that's the trick. Yeah, there's another element that we're missing, too. What about this big dynamic? And we don't talk about this often enough, and I don't know. I'll throw it out there because I, I see positive and negative too, and I think it's subjective to each household. Kim's mom and her family dynamic, I think that her and her mom have a close relationship. And in my opinion, with Kanye's mom no longer being here on this earth, that is the primary family that they deal with outside of their family, right? So a lot of the dynamics on how she's going to deal with raise and prepare her child to go out in the world. It's going to be a lot based on how she was raised, right? True. And if you look at proximity, right? And I believe in family dynamics, proximity always wins. If he lives next door to Kim, how far does the mom live? Not too far, probably. So what I'm saying is this. 
a lot of their dynamics that they're trying to figure out as co-parenting also come from the staple and, uh, of the mom, right? Like that, that's her foundation and her base. How do y'all think that could have an effect on things? So maybe that's a whole different episode for them. Well, I mean, that's different. That's upbringing. Yeah, that's, 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 that's upbringing. And we said she's been exposed to a lot of things, maybe pretty short, especially with this shit with Ray J. But, and being married, what was this, 30? No, it's 30. I, I think overall, and, what we got to realize is that so much of what goes on in other people's lives, we should be curious about what's going on instead of placing judgment of on people's behaviors, right? And I think that's going to be able to get people in a further situation. I think for us as brothers, you know, having the opportunity to discuss these things and seeing that we all have different perspectives. None of those perspectives are invalid. They're just different perspectives, perspectives, which leads to understanding how people can get in these very volatile family dynamic situations. Well, you know what I want about it? America. Stop calling Kanye crazy. Ain't fucking crazy, okay? Stop with that shit. Y'all got a friend, y'all got a mom, y'all got an auntie, y'all got a sister, y'all got a cousin, they come to y'all with the same summer walker ass shit that he be going through. And y'all wanna demonize my homeboy. Cut that shit out, alright? He ain't crazy. Right. That's the episode. That's all he needs to be said. This is done. Come out of here, man. That's it. You call my boy crazy. You call him crazy, bro. You crazy. You crazy.